Hi, uh, welcome to the Student Assembly Informatics. My name is Andreas Wilhelmer. I'm one of your um, student representatives in the Department Council Informatics and um, I will guide you through this event. Um, as most of you, oops, <laughs> as most of you have probably already seen, there's a way to actively participate in this event uh, via sli.go slash uh, in uh, you can uh, ask questions that we will uh, answer in a live Q&A later and we have also prepared a few polls um, to, for you to answer um, so uh, that we can get your guidance with your questions. Also starting 11.30 there, there will be a, um, a second event. Um, uh, if you remember the, the uh, last student assembly that we presented um, our structures there as well and uh, how the service branch of the Fachschaft uh, works. Um, we have um, uh, we, we're doing this separately today. Uh, so with the uh, link you see at the bottom of the slide, this PVP link, uh, you can join if you want to at 11:30. Uh, so um, what are we doing today? Well, um, as you know, we as uh, students uh, have representatives and have a say uh, in within the university. Uh, for example, when uh, uh, when uh, new lectures are approved, uh, when new professors are hired, when uh, there's a, a change in the study plan, or uh, right now, uh, very relevant, when uh, the departments are uh, abandoned and uh, schools are created, uh, we are involved in this process uh, as your representatives. Um, so, uh, and uh, within this event, we would like uh, to give all students the opportunity to, to participate uh, in this process and. Um, uh, Right, so if you have any suggestions or questions, just uh, write them via sli.to slash Okay, so um, let's get it started and actually um, let's uh, test out the polls uh, right away. Um, so as you might have already heard, uh, uh, Professor Hoffmann, the president of TUM, is looking to uh, establish a uh, testing, corona test procedure. Um, to allow for uh, on-site events to happen again and on-site uh, lectures. Um, so we actually wanted to get your feedback on that. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Are you, um, do you feel safe uh, returning to the university with the current situation uh, if there are uh, rapid corona tests available? Uh, or would you prefer to do uh, online teaching? Uh, that being said, this semester will be available uh, online anyway, um, so it, it uh, will not happen that any lecture that started as an online lecture uh, will move to an on-site event uh, during the middle of the semester to make sure that international students can actually participate even if they're not in Munich, um, but uh, this um, uh, possibility is being discussed uh, right now, also uh, looking for the next semester. Right now it isn't possible anyway due to uh, local laws, but um, you never know when things are going to change with the current situation right now. Okay, so um, due to the YouTube delay, I guess I'm going to wait um, like 30 seconds or something until uh, you can answer. And then we're going to close the poll and uh, move on. But uh, as we already have 330 something answers right now, um, it's pretty clear results, so you, uh, forty percent of you say that is uh, that you would actually return to university with tests, and thirty-five percent say okay as long as online is possible. Okay. So I guess uh, let's move on to the next slide, and um, I already. Uh, mentioned this uh, topic schools. Uh, as you might have already heard, uh, the departments or uh, the Fakultäten uh, will be um, um, abolished uh, and um, in our case the uh, department for informatics, mathematics and uh, most of the department for electrical engineering uh, will be combined to one school uh, called CIT, that stands for Computation Information and Technology. Um, within this school we will have uh, four sub uh, uh, several sub-departments, the uh, Department for Electrical Engineering, uh, the Department for uh, compu uh, Computer Engineering, the uh, one for Computer Science and uh, the one for Mathematics. So uh, basically everything that's within the Mathematics department right now will move to Mathematics. The Electrical Engineering will be uh, some of the chairs from the Electrical Engineering department. 
the computer engineering department will be some combination of both electrical engineering and informatics and uh, the rest of the informatics chairs will move to the uh, computer science department. Um, also there's uh, a new thing called professional profiles, uh, so in the future the uh, study programs as we know it uh, will no longer be assigned to one particular, particular school or department but will be combined within one uh, professional profile. Um, there will also be four professional pro profiles for now that um, uh, represent uh, electrical engineering, mathematics and uh, informatics as we know it. And there will also be a, a data uh, engineering and artificial intelligence one. Also, it is possible that over the next few years there are more to come. Um, so, regarding the timeline, this, uh, uh, the school will actually um, start in a uh, move into a transition phase uh, starting the next uh, winter semester uh, on October 1st, uh, 2021. Um, it, once that happens, everything that uh, exists in, a department, in the departments right now will continue to exist for one more year, but also all the structures that exist within the school will also uh, be uh, created and uh, be initiated so, uh, so that there will be a, a layered system uh, to ensure that everything runs smoothly and uh, starting October 2022, uh, the departments as we know them right now will no longer exist and there will only be the school of uh, CIT with uh, the new sub-departments. So uh, over the past few months uh, a lot of work has happened and uh, there were a lot of uh, working groups within the uh, departments, uh, in, within some we were involved with this, uh, in some we weren't. And uh, right now there are the uh, round tables happening uh, together with uh, the uh, president's office uh, where the um, base structure is finalized. So, um, what does this actually mean for you? Um, so, uh, if you're, as you're already studying here, actually not too much will change in your usual, um, uh, in, in your daily uh, studies, because uh, your study plans and everything uh, will remain the same. You always keep the one that you started with. So, all the changes regarding study plan, plans, uh, if there are uh, new course, uh, courses that uh, maybe move in the long term and uh, will be selectable like across uh, across current department borders uh, and all that stuff uh, will only affect the new students and also that's a process that will uh, continue over the next few years and will not start with the uh, with October 1st. Um, what will happen is that you're formally no longer uh, studying at the department uh, of informatics but at the school of CIT so also uh, your uh, final um, Diploma and stuff uh, will have uh, this school name on it. Uh, the institutions uh, will be uh, renamed, rebranded, and also uh, combined. So they will, uh, 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 some of them will be one for all the uh, current uh, departments, um, and uh, some of them will be per department. Some of them will be per professional profile. So the organization structure, uh, who you need uh, to talk to, will change. Uh, also, your uh, student representatives uh, will be uh, elected differently. Uh, for this uh, year's election, we will actually um, uh, still have uh, the, uh, the differentiation into informatics, mathematics and electrical engineering. But starting the year after that, uh, the election will actually happen on a CIT level. So there will be your CIT representatives and then the, the, sub, the subgroups of that. Um, uh, so. Basically, it's a lot of uh, structural changes um, and um, people are hoping for more interdisciplinarity with, uh, with, with the schools. Uh, let's see what's uh, going to happen there. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, um, uh, to be honest, from an organizational point of view, it's a bit of a clusterfuck, but uh, we uh, will see how this works out. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's move on to the next topic because one thing that will probably actually be revised is the way that new students are admitted to, um, uh, to a study program. Because currently in the electrical engineering department we have so-called uh, GOPs, uh, GOPs and uh, at the informatics uh, department we have the uh, Eigenstellungsverfahren, the EFV. Um, so uh, cur uh, in our currently, uh, current um, EFV, uh, it works uh, that way that you're, uh, when you're applying for a bachelor um, a study program, uh, you you have to submit your uh, your uh, grades from uh, school. They will be evaluated, and you will get a certain number of points. And if you are uh, between a certain uh, threshold, 
in between two certain uh, thresholds, uh, you will uh, get a second phase if you're not admitted directly and uh, have an uh, individual uh, talk with some professor. Um, uh, on the other hand, the uh, uh, okay, no, I, I will get to the GOP in a minute because uh, uh, one thing we're seeing right now is uh, that our, uh, especially in the informatics department, our, um, the, our uh, students' number are rising immensely. Uh, we have uh, around uh, 7,000 students uh, across all informatics um, uh, study programs. And um, before Corona, we already noticed that we have a shortage of staff, a shortage of uh, rooms. Um, of course, we are hoping to get new buildings within the next few years, but that's a long process that's uh, uh, connected to a lot of insecurities. And uh, we, we don't really know how long is it, it's going to take and to, uh, if it's going to happen. Um, and uh, for the things we know that they're going to happen regarding new buildings, uh, we, we really don't know um, if it's going to be uh, two years, five years, ten years. So uh, that's a long-term um, solution. But um, if we want to protect the uh, quality of teaching, especially in the uh, lower semesters, we really need uh, to, to um, get a balance there between the available resources and the number of students. Because if the number of students keeps rising, um, the, the staff is just uh, completely um, completely overwhelmed with the, the workload and uh, thus the quality of teaching has to, um, uh, has to suffer. So uh, we actually have a few um, statistics for you here. Uh, those are uh, the, the development of the student numbers um, uh, since uh, I think 2013. Um, so it's, it's insane, we, like uh, over the past few years we had a 250% or something increase in, in students across all uh, informatics uh, study programs excluding uh, bioinformatics um, so we really need to deal with it. So um, now let's get back to the uh, GOP versus EF, uh, EFO uh, topic. Uh, as I already mentioned, the, um, uh, we have this uh, Agnes Schoenstrungser Fund but the Electrical Engineering Department has the um, uh, GOP for fun. Um, the, it, so basically with them, every student is admitted at first, and they have a, a certain set of exams, basically all of the exams of the first and the second semester that uh, people need to pass. Uh, and uh, so they, they are quite hard, and uh, it gets better after that. So everyone that passes the first two semesters can stay, but uh, a lot of people just uh, quit within those semesters. Um, so the um, the advantage of this is that it's maybe a bit less subjective because an uh, individual talk always um, has a bit of subject, uh, subjectiveness to it. If you talk to one professor and the other guy talks to another professor, um, they might not uh, be evaluated completely fairly. Um, but with the GOPs we have the issue that uh, the, the um, resources will be uh, the resource exhaustion within the first two semesters will be even more extreme than it is now because we have even more students, uh, um, so, uh, like an increase of 50% maybe. Um, if you look at uh, how many applicants actually uh, started studying, um, or maybe more than that, uh, I'm not entirely sure right now, I have the statistics somewhere. Um, so, and also as a third option, we have thought about and talked about. Um, including a, a written test in the uh, item session so far as it is now. Um, just to uh, make it easier, uh, more comparable and also uh, not uh, bind so many resources when um, organizing the talks and stuff because uh, uh, there, there are a lot of hours uh, going into this uh, process. Uh, so we actually have pre uh, two surveys prepared for you. At first, uh, what do you prefer? Um, GOP or EFV as such, which system would you prefer in general? And then the second question we'll ask you is uh, which um, variant of the EFV would you actually prefer? Like a uh, oral um, evaluation only, a written evaluation only, or a combination of such? Uh, that being said, um, unfortunately, the EFV is only. No, uh, let, let them answer the first one first so that they have a chance, because we have a delay of like 30 or 40 seconds, so we'll keep it open a minute or something, and then move to the next question. Um, right. 
Okay, uh, so one thing I wanted to mention is uh, that with the current system, the EFV, it is only there to um, uh, evaluate if you if it is realistic that you would uh, pass the study degree. So uh, it, it, it is actually not legal uh, to uh, say, okay, we only have a certain capacity and uh, this, is the capa uh, this is the number of students we want to admit. Uh, but uh, it's uh, you can only say okay uh, we, we are uh, evaluating the applicants on a um, uh, on a certain uh, according to certain heuristics and then say okay that those are the applicants that are uh, feasible uh, that, that will be approved and those uh, will not be approved but you cannot say okay we make a cut at this many applicants. Um, the only system that allows for that is actually the numerous clauses but we really have the hopes that. Uh, uh, with uh, a new university law that might uh, change because we it's really getting out of hand within our uh, faculty. Okay, maybe let's move to the uh, next question. Uh, I see that uh, around 55% of you say stick with the EFO and um, uh, the rest of you, uh, I don't know, a, a bunch of you said uh, GP, but uh, yeah. I don't see it on my screen anymore, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so now let's uh, look at the second question, uh, if you do, uh, which evaluation method would you prefer? Uh, I will wait a few more seconds until more people have answered. But it also looks like that an overwhelming majority of you would actually prefer the combination of written and oral um, exams. So right now, with around 300 answers, we are at 50% written and oral, 20% written only, 16% only oral only. Okay. Because, uh, um, as I said, as the, the um, different departments are merging, there will be talks about um, uh, like um, unifying the uh, system, how people are admitted to our study programs um, across the school, and uh, so we can take this feedback. Uh, with us and uh, hope to push for a, a system that uh, will allow for written and oral examination or uh, evaluation uh, and not the GOP one. Okay, I guess uh, let's move on to the next topic. Um, Right, um, I already mentioned uh, the new university law, Roland, uh, the hopes we have uh, for that. We already talked about this a, 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 during the uh, last student assembly. Um, so there are a bunch of issues we presented back then. Um, unfortunately, there was quite a big delay. So um, just to outline what happened until now, uh, we got a um, like a, a draft of the key issues half a year ago or, um, or maybe a year ago. Uh, and uh, then submitted our statements, uh, what we uh, thought wasn't uh, too good and what we wanted to change about that. There were also a few live streams with uh, Staatsminister Siebler, who had a Q&A. You can rewatch those on YouTube, I think. Um, and then after that, the draft bill, so the actual uh, draft of the bill that uh, would be presented uh, to the representatives in the Bavarian um, State Parliament, uh, was scheduled to be released um, several weeks ago, but unfortunately due to a bunch of, or maybe it's actually good because they're making changes, uh, due to a bunch of uh, complaints there was a, a delay within the ministry, uh, so we don't have anything new yet, um, so we'll, we'll have to wait for the, uh, to the, for the next student assembly to actually present you with new information, uh, but uh, we'll make sure uh, to get the information out there once we know what the actual draft of the law uh, is like and what actually made it to the law and uh, what will be changed. Um, yeah, so it, it doesn't really make sense to go too deep into this as most information is probably outdated now. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that. Okay, uh, so the next thing I wanted to talk about are the uh, university elections. Um, I already mentioned those earlier. Uh, for this year, it will uh, still be, for the last time, it will be an election uh, solely for the uh, informatics department. Next year, it will be an, an election uh, for the whole school of CIT. So, uh, as you know, um, we, we 
are your representatives. We are, there are a bunch of uh, committees, uh, such as the department councils, uh, council, but all, also very specific committees uh, that uh, we participate in. And uh, there is a lot of uh, work to do when issues arise to talk to the faculty and stuff. Um, uh, so uh, if you want to participate in this process and actually shape how our university looks in the future, uh, you can participate in the, in the university election. So uh, how this works is uh, any student who gets enough supporters can actually submit a list. The deadline for this is May 31st. Um, so you need to collect a, a certain number of uh, signatures uh, for your list uh, to be approved and um, uh, then you will be electable at the next election. Uh, you can of course also uh, join an existing list but if you're interesting, uh, interested in uh, participating in the election or uh, you know, shaping our university, uh, feel free to ask us questions. We uh, just shoot us an email via fsinfo at fs.tun.de. Uh, we're happy to answer questions and um, yeah, maybe, maybe um, join the list or make your own. Uh, also, uh, speaking of elections, uh, you've probably gotten a, um, an email by Jay, um, my uh, colleague, a few uh, days ago um, regarding the uh, election of uh, student representatives for each semester. Uh, so uh, the, the one uh, did the representatives uh, that are elected in the big election during the summer semester are actually elected for one whole year, but there are also uh, representatives uh, for the um, uh, for each individual semester, and we uh, and also we wanted to introduce those now for a, each individual study program on, on a um, uh, for the master's uh, studies because uh, issues within master study programs are usually not uh, specific to one semester, whereas in bachelor programs for the first four, four semester it is quite uh, linear what uh, people what lectures people attend. Uh, so, um, if you want uh, to uh, participate and uh, want to be a candidate, uh, send us uh, an email. Uh, all the instructions are in the email you already received. Um, I think the, the deadline is set to Sunday for applications and uh, then there, there will be uh, an election that will be uh, announced in a separate email uh, via an online poll. Um, so uh, your, uh, the, your uh, tasks as a representative for a semester or study program are basically to uh, be the, uh, the connecting piece between all the students of the study program and uh, us as the general representatives as well as the uh, faculty. So whenever there is a change of the, uh, you know, the, the uh, study program regulations or if there is an issue with a specific lecture or anything that uh, would uh, be within your your responsibility to handle and uh, also if we have any questions about, uh, if we as like general representatives have any questions about specific things to the study program, uh, we, uh, it's often difficult to find people who can actually uh, um, give us uh, good information. So it's always good to have a fixed uh, person to talk to from both sides. Okay, uh, and the election, the, the, the big election for the general uh, student representatives uh, will be on 6th, 6th of July this year. Um, right, uh, so um, just to remind you what is actually elected in this uh, general election. So uh, you, there, will, uh, there are generally two um, pieces of paper you will receive. Uh, one is on the uh, department level or uh, later will be on the school level. And uh, one is uh, for the uh, Tumwite uh, election. Uh, so basically what you uh, elect on in the department level are your uh, student representatives uh, that um, go to the different committees and stuff. And uh, also the, the, one, uh, the two people with the most votes uh, on this level uh, are the representatives uh, in the uh, department council. So that is actually a directly elected uh, position. Uh, and then there um, um, are certain uh, committees uh, that are entirely made up of uh, students. Uh, so the, the elected, uh, the, the elected representatives on the informatics uh, level, uh, or later the school of CIT level, will uh, delegate certain people uh, to the FSR Fachschaftenrat, um, which uh, operates on TUM level, and then in turn um, uh, elects the. Uh, 
uh, Aster, uh, the people who uh, work in the Aster. So that's basically your uh, uh, the executive. The Aster is the executive branch on the uh, two mod level, and the FSR is the uh, legislative branch, so to say, uh, from a student side. And also there's the uh, LAC, uh, the uh, Landesassenkonferenz, um, which is basically a, uh, the the uh, student uh, parliament on a, the Bavarian level. Uh, which is, for example, also heavily involved in uh, rewriting the university law right now, or at least uh, giving you know statements and feedback, uh, right? And uh, as I already said, there's there's uh, this election that uh, happens on the department level, and then there's uh, one thing that is directly elected on a university level, and those are your representatives in the uh, senate and board of trustees, um, which is basically the um, highest committee at TUM. Um, so uh, it, it basically uh, is the analog on to the uh, department council, but on a uh, tomb level. Um, right. So uh, don't forget to vote and maybe actively participate in the election if you're interested. Okay, um, moving on to the next topic um, regarding plagiarism detector tools. So currently uh, TUM is looking to centralize the uh, to to create a centralized tool for uh, to detect plagiarism plagiarism um, there, it is not uh, it has not been decided at which tool will be used uh, and uh, in in which context it will be used but um, it, uh, it should be available to all lecturers uh, for example if you submit some kind of homework. Um, so uh, basically we also prepared a poll just to get a, a general uh, feeling how you feel how you feel about the use of such tools in general so head over to slido and uh, do it right so uh, are you generally okay with uh, uh, your work being checked on a regular basis uh, should it be reviewed by a human um, uh, so, so that's that's uh, always an issue. We we hear that that some uh, some lecturers uh, use those tools, but uh, don't really re review those uh, things. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the, if you have a lecture with like uh, a thousand people, it's really hard to manually review all those uh, those um, those cases. So I'm going to wait a few more seconds just to bridge the delay. Okay, like uh, 350 people have voted so far and 40% um, of you say I don't really care as long as instructors explain why I'm accused. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the, the issue we always heard. Always heard so uh, we'll definitely uh, take this into consideration and uh, push this into the talks with the uh, university that uh, there has to be a policy that uh, all cases must be reviewed manually uh, and uh, you can't just uh, do the uh, let the tool do its thing and uh, that's it. 32% um, say fine by me but take care of data protection and 16% uh, I don't really like the general suspicion. Uh, so uh, the gist of it is, it's okay to use uh, to use plagiarism tools, but uh, we have to review those manually. Also, lecturers have to review those manually. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, thing. Um, there are exams in the summer semester, as you <laughs> probably know. Um, so how are they going to work out? Well, um, as far as we know right now, most exams will be online, if not all exams. It, it doesn't. It, it will probably be quite similar to what you experienced in the winter semester. Uh, it is quite unlikely that we can move to uh, to on-site uh, exams. So uh, expect some tool to be used, uh, uh, maybe to exam or Proctorio, or hopefully not Proctorio, even though the license still exists. Um, we will definitely keep you posted as soon as we get updates, but uh, it, it's uh, for this semester just expect everything to be online and uh, any changes will likely only take effect uh, with the next winter semester um, and 
this heavily depends on how uh, Corona has developed until then. But if there's anything wrong, if um, you have any issues with uh, lectures, if uh, uh, like for example uh, last semester we had two lectures that, that hardly released any material for the first four weeks because they uh, just didn't manage uh, uh, switch to the digital format properly, uh, or if there's anything uh, wrong with the exams, if they um, use uh, surveillance methods that are not um, uh, fair um, or that you do not don't consider fair, just write us an email. We can talk to the lecturers. We um, uh, can also, uh, if it's necessary, uh, escalate things to the study dean and uh, those people. Uh, but we have to know what uh, what's happening. So uh, just contact us. Uh, we have an email address, a general email address, fs uh, info at fs .tum .de. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, uh, yeah, no, I think it's fine. Okay, um, so I guess uh, we have covered most topics that we prepared from our side. So, um, we will move to questions, I guess. And <laughs> the first question is this exam, or is this event relevant for the exam? <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, I think that's a joke question because there is no exam about this event. When will Galileo open? Ah, uh, the ever-returning question of Galileo. Well, um, that's actually a difficult question uh, because there have been so many delays. I mean, it should have been open about five years ago, but um, considering how, that are, there are more and more companies actually moving into the Galileo, I think it's somewhat realistic that once Corona is over, we're going to have the Galileo open. But uh, uh, more information than that uh, is not really reliable. Would all these changes regarding GOP, EFV apply to the master's degree as well, as well or just the bachelor's? Um, well, the, uh, the regulations are a bit different for the master's degree. Right now, with the bachelor degree, you're usually coming from school, so uh, the, the heuristics that is used for the first phase is um, uh, that they are evaluating your grades in school. Uh, and you're, uh, you get a, receive a certain amount of points and uh, then depending on your uh, points you will either be admitted directly or uh, rejected directly or be admitted to a talk uh, with some professor. Uh, and with the master's degree you also have a, a, the chance for a talk but the first phase is based on uh, your application, your uh, uh, motivational text, your uh, the essay that you write and, and uh, also the uh, uh, lectures that you heard during your bachelor. So uh, uh, basically, if you uh, have, if you heard all the lectures uh, that are offered at the informatics department at TUM, you already have a, a base number of uh, points. Um, so this might as change as well. As a a, a, a Eigenschutzstandsverfahren exists for the master, um, but uh, this is definitely up for uh, up for discussion. So. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is quite possible that uh, the master students will be affected as well. But it's uh, uh, not going to happen for next semester or something. That's something that's probably going to take uh, one more year. Maybe, maybe even more, depending on how uh, talks go. Uh, bleiben Onkel Lou und der Gourmet in this? Uh, so will Onkel Lou, like the, the, the Asian uh, shop and the... Uh, uh, the snack uh, thing in front of the uh, underground station stay. Uh, I, as far as I know, the contract with Galileo still exists in, unchanged and uh, they have to leave once uh, Galileo opens. So uh, my current information is that there have no, been no changes. Uh, if we hear anything to contest this, uh, we will let you know. But uh, yeah, it's unfortunately, I, I don't think that you can, they can stay once the Galileo opened up due to contract issues. Any update on the proposed petition fees? Um, actually, yes, there were updates uh, because they were, uh, like in the in the initial uh, white paper where they uh, outlined uh, the um, uh, issues uh, regarding the university law. Uh, they uh, had the option for international students, non-EU international students, to be uh, charged tuition fees. 
Um, however, there was a, a huge backlash regarding this and there is no written document that, uh, to contest uh, this uh, because we don't really have the draft of the bill uh, right now. But in his Q&A that was live streamed on YouTube, uh, Staatsminister Siebler actually said that there will be no tradition fees and this uh, thing will not make it into the law. So that's a good thing. Um, uh, we, we can only know for sure once we have the actual draft bill, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm somewhat positive that this will actually uh, change. So, um, testing would have to be done daily to ensure safety. How many tests would be provided? Uh, are false negatives considered? Um, I do not really know what the capacity will be. Uh, so they are currently setting up uh, um, testing facilities um, in the Studitum, uh, as well, in Garching as well as in the uh, in Arztstraße in Munich. Um, those are actually, but those are actually organized by a uh, company. Uh, I and we as a student uh, representatives also only learned about uh, this, uh, this the, the, that the plans are already this concrete like uh, two days ago or something. Um, so we don't really have any information about the actual cap test capacity yet uh, and uh, also the, the uh, final policy is not yet finalized. It's, it's still in the process of being set up and also as of right now um, it, it's not possible anyway to go to university with tests uh, due, uh, like for the next uh, few weeks or so uh, but um, the hope of the president is that he can actually initiate this uh, starting May, June, whatever, whenever it's possible. Uh, so unfortunately I uh, cannot give you any more information of that as of right now. However, we will definitely keep you updated. We also have a, a newsletter, an FSMPI Telegram newsletter, where we uh, post relevant information and if it's really important we sometimes send out emails. Um, so uh, you can find this newsletter via t.me, what was it? Slash FSMPI slash FSMPI, I yeah, think. Yeah, we can look it up, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, next one. About plagiarism. It's not only about knowing why you were accused, but also getting the chance to defend yourself. Uh, for example, I didn't get that. Yeah, that's uh, definitely one thing we, will, uh, we heard a lot and we will take into the uh, talk. So it, it, uh, there has to be a, uh, an option to manually review uh, things and uh, to contest things. Because if you are just accused by some random tool and uh, cannot even contest uh, the result, that's, uh, that's, that's not fair. Um, so we will do everything we can to ensure that there will be an option to contest this and uh, to realistically contest this. Uh, yeah, and we'll keep you updated as well. As I said, it's, uh, there, there, there has been a, a, a task force created at TUM level that will deal with this tool and it's uh, just now taking up work and it will uh, probably take the next two or three months, I guess, uh, uh, until everything is finalized. I don't think it's going to be any faster, so expect it to be ready for uh, next semester at the earliest. Um, why is CIT better than mathematics, electrical engineering, and informatics? That's a good question. Uh, I, to be honest, I don't really think it is. But uh, we are no longer in any position to actually uh, revert this process because it, uh, it's like the one big project a new president um, uh, wanted to realize and uh, yeah, we can only do our best to make it uh, as, as uh, good as possible. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, bureaucratic hurdles and uh, a lot of restructuring is going on that is also um, somewhat reducing the influence of, of uh, departments or schools at a TUM level as the number of schools is uh, reduced. Uh, so, so there's a lot, of, a lot going on behind the scenes, but uh, um, yeah, we, we just need to work with what is happening and uh, it's it's just a fact we have to live, live with, unfortunately. I think I already said this during the last two student assemblies. Um, yeah, that's how it is. But uh, we are trying to make the best of it and uh, we'll see how it works out. 
Uh, if Bavarian law passes next summer semester, what would change for a student who is planning to do his or her master's thesis in the summer semester of 2022? Um, I, regarding your master's thesis, I don't think a lot will change actually. Uh, usually, uh, the the uh, the law gives like a general outline for the uh, like it's the, it's the very basic uh, um, ground that everything else is built upon. Uh, but those uh, specific uh, regulations are usually made on a TUM level, and even with the school transition, uh, the regulations. Uh, usually, uh, like uh, the, your specific study uh, plans and stuff will uh, stay the same for all the students that already started studying with one specific study uh, plan. Only if you go into a new um, uh, into a new study program, you will get uh, the new ones. Uh, so, it, 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 regarding your master thesis, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a huge issue if you already study here. Uh, is there any reason why informatics is translated as informatics and not computer science? Computer science seems to be a much more common term internationally. Well, um, that's a thing very specific to TUM. It's a decision that was made years ago and um, it doesn't really make sense to get into this discussion because uh, it has already been a huge issue what to name the new departments, uh, because as you might have noticed, there will be no sub-department for informatics um, at, the, at the School of uh, Computation, Information and Technology. Uh, and the reason for this is that um, there should not be a perceived uh, like direct uh, follow-up department for the informatics department, because uh, we are basically split up into the computer, computer engineering and the computer science department. And uh, if we name one of those informatics, then the others, uh, others will say, uh, okay, but uh, then we are not real informaticians or whatever they want to call themselves. Uh, so um, it's, it's really not a lot to gain and a huge, huge room for discussion and uh, things to, to get out of hand. Uh, so it's basically a relic from some decision made 20, 30 years ago, whatever. Uh, I found a support for students facing mental health issues practically non-existent. No options such as extended deadlines and the like. Uh, this is considered. Uh, well, actually, the deadlines for like all your credit hurdles, uh, those were extended. They were extended by very wide for the last two semesters and also for this semester. So that's maybe a thing important to mention. Uh, so um, if you uh, if your study program as informatics has it has some kind of credit hurdles that you have uh, to achieve a certain number of credits after a certain number of semester semesters. This will not apply to the last two semesters and to this semester. Um, so uh, even if you do not write any exams, you will not uh, be kicked out of university until uh, Corona is over. So uh, maybe next semester it, it will get back to normal, but uh, for now those deadlines are extended. Uh, with extensions for um, a thesis stuff, that's handled on an individual basis. You can always uh, request an extension, but uh, you need a valid reason for this. Um, and uh, with uh, mental health issues, um, there are actually very few uh, things within TUM, but there's the uh, Studentenwerk that uh, they're actually great. Also, there's a hotline that you can call. They uh, can give you anything from uh, guidance about uh, how to handle your studies uh, up, until, uh, uh, up to professional help and also and redirect you to professionals uh, if you have mental health issues. So uh, look it up at the uh, Studentenwerk website. It's something called, uh, I think, Psychosoziale Service or something. Um, we can post a link in, uh, somewhere afterwards or maybe in chat. Uh, maybe you can do it. Okay, um, so that's the, those are the things that I uh, know of. Moving on to the next questions. What are the benefits of school looking at the facultative system at the moment? Um, well, 
there, there is always like this nice word interdisciplinarity that they like to use in the context of schools because you're mashing a lot of uh, uh, separate uh, units together. Um, they uh, and also it, it, it's uh, as I said a, a bit of in a way it's a way to reduce the the influence of um, this many single um, individual structures on a, on a higher level. So as you have uh, 14 faculties or some uh, 14 departments and only seven schools or something, um, the the uh, power of the administration at two level uh, will somewhat increase. But um, personally, I uh, don't think it's a necessary change yeah, we will see how it works out. It's, it's, I think we just uh, need to see what the future holds over the next few semesters. Uh, does this mean that there will be new study programs, e.g. one specifically for AI? Uh, as of, uh, well, it's, there's always a possibility of new study programs uh, being introduced, um, but this is not directly connected to the, uh, the school system. So the existing study programs will be rearranged and assigned to a certain professional profile, as that's what they call it, um, and everything study program related will be managed within this professional profile, uh, and um, they're, they're, those are a bit more dynamic than the, uh, than the uh, departments, the sub-departments of the schools. Um, the, but uh, you, there is not, uh, there is no direct correlation be between the uh, introduction of the School of CIT and new study programs being introduced. Uh, I think it's somewhat realistic that at some point there will be an AI program, but it's not nothing that's going to happen within the next year or something. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Any updates regarding the cheaper MVB semester tickets? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, I don't know. I don't think there are any updates uh, because currently there's also the difficult situation that most people don't even use the semester ticket. Um, in my last information was that it, it's uh, renegotiated and the 365 euro ticket that was, that there, there was some funding missing and it didn't magically appear during Corona, so it has basically been uh, delayed until further notice. Um, but uh, if we get any updates uh, uh, from the negotiators, we will, we will uh, get the information to you. Will Wirt Era Praktikum Offizielle Satz? So, will the uh, um, computer architecture practical course be replaced? Well, um, we have been working on a, a change of the um, of the uh, study program, uh, informatics bachelor study program. Uh, there are actually changes that will probably take effect with next winter semester. Um, tomorrow there will be two meetings of the uh, study committee where some of those changes will be discussed. However, as it looks like right now, the uh, the computer architecture practical course will remain in a reduced form. There will be uh, some um, extra focus on the C programming language and there will be a reduced number of credits uh, and uh, instead the um, uh, there will be a, a IT security course uh, introduced in the third semester and uh, I believe uh, the um, one course from the from uh, uh, the semester will be moved to the second. Um, but this is not entirely finalized. However, yeah, current status is it will uh, remain, but in a reduced uh, form, um, right? What about next semester? I moved to my home country. I basically need to know now if I, had, uh, I need a flat in Munich in September. Unfortunately, I can only guarantee, give you guarantees for this semester. We, we have a guarantee that this semester will be studyable online, so you won't have a course that uh, will switch to 
on-site uh, to an on-site lecture during the semester. However, we just do not know what's going to happen next semester. It's just uh, nobody knows. Uh, everyone wants to do on-site uh, lectures again, uh, but nobody knows if it's going to be possible depending on how uh, fast the vaccinations move along and uh, how the corona numbers develop. Uh, so uh, it, it would be a guess at this point. It's, it's uh, just I'm unfortunately unable to tell you right now. I need to have 30 credits at the end of the third semester. Oops, something moved. Okay, I need to have uh, 30. What, what happened? Okay, it disappeared for some reason. Uh, is the transition to. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> uh, okay, it's back again. I need to have 30 credits at the end of this semester, but now I only need to have uh, 30 credits at the end of the sixth semester, right? Uh, well, well, it depends how long you have studied here. Usually uh, starting third semester you have to achieve 30 credits and then each semester, additional semester you have to get an additional 30 uh, credits. So basically after the, uh, after the fourth uh, 60 and so on. Uh, uh, and uh, every student that actually studied uh, or was, was formally um, admitted to study during this semester or the, the previous two semesters uh, got this automatic extension. So any deadlines will move by exactly one semester. If you started studying this semester, then your credit total will be moved by one semester. If you already started studying like a semester ago, then it will be moved by two semesters. And what's going to happen next semester is uh, unclear right now. Uh, it might, move, might be back to normal then. But um, yeah, so it depends uh, how long you've already studied here. It just moves the deadline. Some profs recorded their lectures once at the start of Corona, sometimes with terrible quality. I don't update them. Can this be improved? Uh, this is usually an issue we need to um, talk to with the uh, specific lecturers. That's uh, unfortunately not something that, uh, where we can create a general regulation. Um, but if you have a specific lecture that uh, has a bad quality, uh, and pre-recorded lectures and uh, you want to change this, uh, just write us an email with the details and uh, we can try to uh, talk to the lecturer and uh, maybe escalate it if things get really bad. Um, yeah, so I think you just need to be a bit more specific, maybe uh, write an email to fsinfo at fs.tum.de and we can handle this. Is the school, a transition to schools beneficial for the teaching quality or, do, or will it get even worse? Um, I mean, the impact of schools for the teaching quality is not immediately, it does not really take effect immediately because all changes to, to study programs will uh, um, like uh, iterate through the semesters. But um, it, I, I would say that the, the biggest change that could actually affect the teaching quality is the thing we already talked about, the Eigenmann uh, Session Safan and the GOP, um, because if we change the, uh, the method, how new students are admitted, we uh, can somewhat uh, steer the um, number of students up or down. And the more students we have without getting additional buildings, uh, the, the, the worse the teaching quality gets because the workload gets just too high uh, for the lecturers. So um, um, there is no real direct correlation there. Uh, we just need to look how we can restore this balance between uh, personnel, buildings, and number of students. Uh, do today's polls have any power? Can they influence uh, this, the uh, decision making? So uh, we will definitely use those polls as a ground for further discussion in the because, for example, uh, regarding the uh, the the um, uh, session so far. There will be uh, working groups that uh, will uh, that will uh, work out the new system uh, and uh, finally make the decision. That's not a decision just made by students, uh, but uh, we can take this as a uh, as a ground. What our opinion should be in these talks. 
so um, yeah, it will have an influence in regards to the students' uh, representative's position in those uh, in those meetings, but it, it cannot ensure the outcome because uh, there are also professors and uh, employees and uh, then there's uh, the dean, president, and so on. Uh, who also have to say something about this and uh, there, we need to make compromises uh, uh, at some point usually. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, I think returning to uni uh, would be cool as long as we still have recordings available and have online courses but on-site practicums and tutorials. Um, I completely agree with you that lecture recordings are great during the um, during the semester as well. Unfortunately, um, there's uh, something there that it is really hard to um, create a regulation that in some way forces a lecturer uh, uh, or makes it makes this a an, an, an hard requirement to have a lecture recording uh, if it's an on-site lecture. Um, because it's, uh, th there's a freedom, freedom of science and teaching, uh, you cannot uh, tell them what their content should be and it is also really hard to, uh, to tell them how to deliver the content, which is, uh, it, there's a good thing that this protection exists, but um, the main argument we hear from lecturers um, against lecture recordings when on-site lectures happen is that the number of people actually attending the live lectures reduces significantly and they just wanna, don't want to talk to an empty lecture hall. Uh, and the other thing is that some say, okay, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, some students will, uh, that I make a mistake or something, uh, or that I, uh, uh, that there's a, a little detail and uh, that that's some technically correct construction. And then some student will come and tell me in the exam review, but you said at minute so and so in lecture recording so and so that this and this is that way. Uh, so it really drags out this whole process and they're afraid of that. Uh, so those are the main arguments we hear. But um, we already uh, did our best to get more lecture recordings before Corona, and I'm, I hope that uh, the acceptance of digital formats will be higher now that uh, we are all familiar with home office, uh, and that it will be some combination in the end. Um, yeah, but uh, we'll see how it works out. It's it's um, a thing that's really hard to enforce, unfortunately. Why is, the TUM, uh, why is the TUM Student Council no longer part of the German Federal Level Summit? Uh, well, there's, uh, there's the FZS, the Freie Zusammenschluss Studierender, which uh, the TUM Student Council was um, part of. Uh, however, the uh, Student Council left this, uh, this organization. Uh, this was before my time. This was uh, several years ago. Um, it, it, uh, had to do something with uh, the with some political opinions that were mentioned that the representatives at the time didn't agree with, also with uh, that the organization organization structure that was really inefficient. Uh, so um, uh, that happened back then. I I, I uh, cannot really tell you what led to this decision uh, in the first place. Uh, I only have this information second hand myself. Um, so it is possible to join FZS again, of course, um, but it, uh, it this would be a decision by the FSR. Like the, uh, the uh, if you're a participant in the, in the university election, as I said, there's the representatives at the department level. They will delegate people to the FSR, and uh, the FSR has the power to reapply to join this uh, this uh, um, group. Uh, that being said, there are a lot of universities that are actually not a part of this uh, uh, of the FZS. Uh, it uh, while the luck is actually something that uh, is or at least will be in the new law. So there's there is just a, a it's it's not a um, organization that is um, fixed in the law. But um, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to change that, participate in the election actively do something and uh, try to convince the FSR to, to rejoin if you uh, want to do that, uh, feel free. I, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard work <laughs> because uh, there are uh, a, a lot of people who do not want this as far as I know, but um, it's certainly possible. Uh, kann man überhaupt noch auf Deutsch studieren? 
Uh, can you still study in German? Uh, yes, for bachelor students this should be possible. For bachelor students the official language is German, for master degrees the official language is English. So um, usually your basic lectures in bachelor degrees are uh, in German, um, but uh, and the basic lecture in master degrees are in, German, uh, in English and everything that is electable um, is an either German or English, but uh, you have a reduced um, uh, diversity uh, in, with regards to the the courses you can take, and I, uh, and I mean uh, science is something that's happening internationally, so uh, you won't get around speaking English at some point, I think, but. Um, uh, on paper, it's still possible, and uh, also realistically, but only if, uh, it is possible, but only for bachelor students. But uh, yeah, the, the, it, this it is not guaranteed that it will stay this way, uh, because all trends move towards more lectures being English. And uh, actually, I, I don't think it's a bad thing personally, because uh, uh, it it makes uh, communication in, uh, with, with other universities or internationally so much easier if. Thing. Uh, also, if, if uh, I mean, most papers are submitted in English, and uh, because if everyone one wrote in their own language, you would end up with a bunch of papers that the, the other parties are not able to read, and I think people would do things twice, thrice, whatever. Um, so there's that. If you're in a bachelor, yes. Otherwise, no. If our exam will be written using Proctorio or a similar tool which doesn't value your privacy, what options do we have to write the exam without such a tool? Uh, so there is a law in Bavaria that uh, um, gives you the right to uh, an on-site alternative uh, if you use such a tool, a tool such as Proctorio, while you are, uh, where you actually uh, have surveillance enabled and stuff. Um, however, there um, are um, it, 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 usually this on these on-site exams happen in a, in a happen that way that they just take Proctorio, remove the webcam, remove the microphone, and uh, you still write the same exam, but you're just uh, proctored on-site by a real person. Um, it's a bit fishy, maybe, uh, and uh, we are we were we tried to uh, stop Proctorio from the beginning uh, because we're really we really have concerns regarding data protection and uh, other things. Uh, if you are not comfortable with um, installing Proctorio on your own device, uh, Polere does have a certain number of laptops. So um, you should be able to write them an email uh, if you do it in time, with, with a few weeks before the exam, uh, and you should be able to get a laptop from them where Proctorio can be installed so that you do not have to do it on your own device. Uh, and if you then do it on site, you will have uh, no video, no audio enabled, so it should be pretty anonymous. Uh, but Unfortunately, it is still up to the lecturer to decide if they want to use Proctorio. It's really rare though in the mathematics department. We have Tomexam as a much more used tool, sometimes Artemis. Uh, so we are um, actually uh, quite privileged in regard to this, while other departments such as uh, the, the um, economics department, they, they use it on a regular basis. Does Munich or Gahing have any future plans for more dorms? Um, yes and no. The tomb does. That's that's actually one positive thing about our new president. He's a, as you might have noticed, a fan of the American system, which of course uh, uh, is part of the reason why we got the school system. Um, but this also includes on-campus housing. So there has been a task force that was created like a year ago or something. I haven't heard a lot about this task force uh, in the past months, but it exists somewhere. Uh, and this task force is supposed to talk with um, politicians from uh, Gahing, from Munich, and so on, um, uh, and 
uh, evaluate the options to build new uh, student housing. Uh, unfortunately, this will take time. So it's it's uh, I think it's realistic that within the next five or ten years, some project will start to build um, uh, student housing around here. But uh, it, it's nothing that we as students will st still benefit from because uh, construction sites are just something that. Uh, take a long time to organize, to finance, and uh, to actually realize. Uh, also, in Garhing, there is a bit of political resistance because uh, the people who lived in Garhing before the university got so big had a like their small town, you know, um, and they don't want that to change. So there's a certain amount of resistance from the uh, uh, political level that they do not want to build. Um, uh, student housing, there was one case where a, a potential privately funded student um, dorm should have been built in Garhing, but they uh, didn't approve it because they wanted to build some swimming facility instead. Uh, so, I mean, if you on actively want to uh, change something regarding that, um, you, you can always uh, try to bring it to the attention of uh, the, the mayor in Garhing. And um, uh, of course, uh, participate in the election in Garhing once this happens again if you live there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a difficult process. It won't happen in our time, but it's it's uh, something that is likely to happen at some point in the future. You guys don't get enough credit for what you do. Thank you. Oh, that's nice to hear. Thanks. Uh, will this mean I can write thesis cross-department uh, cross easily or my main professor still needs to be from an informatics chair? That is actually one thing that is a benefit from the school system in a way uh, that each professor within a school can, uh, can um, supervise a, a thesis uh, with, for any student within the school. Also, or uh, when it comes to PhD uh, titles, it's, uh, it's like that as well. So any professor from any of the three departments that are merged into the CIT school can supervise any PhD thesis uh, that ends in one of the titles that any of the departments had before. So uh, yeah, it, it, there will be a bit more flexibility with this actually. Um, so that should be possible once uh, this is set up. But it might it, it might only take effect 2022. So I, I don't know if this is already part of the transition phase. I would need to look this up actually. And uh, yeah, uh, we can get back to you if you want to. GOPs, setting people up for failure is plural. Why is this even considered? Just don't admit it in the first, uh, it was just don't admit them in the first place. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I personally don't like it uh, as well. But my main argument is that the teaching quality in the first two semesters suffers immensely because you uh, just get even bigger lectures and stuff. Um, the argument for GOPs is that it's uh, just fairer, considering that you have knowledge that you are taught within like two semesters, and uh, can prove that you're actually capable of of acquiring this knowledge. And, and working with it, uh, because whenever you do something before you actually start to study, you need to um, restrict yourself to very basic things. Uh, you, you can uh, ask uh, for bachelor, especially for bachelor programs, you can ask uh, general logic puzzles and uh, general, uh, very general questions. Um, or maybe you can release a catalog of questions that you, or topics that you need to work through before you start studying uh, and, and ask a few questions in a written test. Uh, but it's it, it's uh, so the, the argument is usually it's it's not the same it's it's not fair or also if you talk to somebody that's very subjective so it's uh, not as fair but uh, personally I, I uh, agree with you that uh, a, a GOP is not the ideal system. Okay. Uh, also, um, before uh, we will continue the Q and A in a minute. Uh, just note that now that it's around 11, uh, 15, 11, right, 11.15, uh, the BBB session will start. Um, so if you want to know more about what the service branch of the Student Council here at the, uh, at the Fachschaft does, or how we are structured, uh, what, what did, uh, or if you are interested in working 
uh, for example, at the, with the whatever event unit uh, script sale, uh, or, or also our Hopus structure will again be uh, presented. Uh, uh, like if you if you um, want to do something in the service branch, head over to this room. You can also switch between those two. We'll continue the Q and A here, the general Q and A for the topics we already talked about, and uh, over there uh, there will be a, a video conference with uh, people who can tell you very specific things. Uh, one-on-one -on -one, uh, regarding those uh, uh, services we offer. Um, okay, the link is uh, up on the slide. You should see it. I hope. Yeah, you see it. Uh, and in the meantime, and I will chat. Huh? And, in ah, and, and in the chat. We, we already we also posted it in the chat on YouTube. I think. Okay, great. Uh, please improve lecture. Uh, right. I will get back to the questions now. Please improve lecture quality. Uh, we're trying to, we're doing our best to do so. If you have any specific issues, write us an email, fsinfo at fs um, But yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say actually. We, we, we really do our best to do this. Okay, next thing. Isn't GOP also a thing in the informatics department? Well, it's, it's somewhat of a soft, uh, softer uh, GOP. The thing is, uh, with a real GUP, you have two major differences. First, you need to uh, you you don't have like uh, the re regulation that says uh, pass one or two out of four lectures, which is happening in the informatics department right now. So yes, you need to pass two out of four first semester lectures until the second semester, and that's actually the, the second difference. If you have a um, if you have a um, like a, a, a system like an informatics department, you need to do it until the end of the second semester and there's no set number of tries, but it just depends on um, how often is it, offer, it is offered. So basically in a usual semester, if you don't get any extensions, you have uh, uh, two tries. Uh, but, uh, but it's not like there's no counter, um, whereas with the GOPs, there's actually a counter. It depends on how often you try it. And if you fail on the second try, uh, you're out immediately, and uh, it um, uh, so uh, you're usually also automatically registered within the uh, first two, uh, first semesters uh, for the GP, so you can't really skip them. Uh, but it actually made a difference at the beginning of Corona because some of those uh, things moved, others didn't. Um, so yeah, it's it's a much much more restrictive and much harder thing, and also it usually spans across all lectures of the first two semesters that are mandatory. Uh, so yeah. The, the, it's a, a little bit goes in direction a little bit, but it's really, really a watered down version we have here. Why is the MBB so uh, fee so high? Two hundred bucks, while you already have to pay eight hundred for a single room flat, is just incredibly high. So anything you can do about it. Well, um, uh, just a bit of history on that. Um, the semester ticket, uh, uh, like I think five six, seven years ago, it didn't actually exist uh, in this form, but it was uh, negotiated between the different uh, student representations here at uh, TUM, at the LMU, and uh, the, other, uh, the others at, at in Munich, uh, and the MVB at the city. And um, it was just, uh, the, the thing that we pay is just the result of this negotiation, because uh, otherwise the MVB could have said as, well, as well, okay, we can't uh, finance, uh, this thing if you don't pay at least this many uh, euros uh, and you just don't get a semester ticket at all. Um, and it is actually only negotiated for a span of five or six years, so it is currently in the process of being renegotiated, uh, as far as I know. Also, there is this parallel process of the 365 euro ticket for a whole year that currently like um, school pupils are, are included in, but students at universities are not yet because uh, the state said we, 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 uh, we are missing 20 million euros uh, to finance this. Uh, but we are in the process of uh, receiving this uh, at some point. So it's, it's a possibility this will, that this will happen. Unfortunately, it, as I already said earlier, it was delayed due to Corona. So uh, one, uh, it will probably resume, the talks will resume once uh, Corona is over. Uh, the one thing where we have um, the, the highest flexibility is probably uh, the, re the, the, the relation between um, 
the uh, amount of money that everyone has to pay, um, the Solidaritätsbeitrag, so that you can drive with your student ID at night and in the weekends, uh, and that ev everyone gets it, uh, even if they don't need public trans uh, transport to get to university, and, uh, and uh, the semester ticket. So if you increase the one, you can decrease the other, um, but it's also a result of those negotiations. Uh, yeah, we, we were uh, as we're doing our best with regards to that as well. Uh, if you're actually interested um, in actively doing something about it, there's something called Mobilitätsbeauftragte, so um, uh, at the ASTA, uh, and their main task, amongst others, is to negotiate this ticket uh, together with the other uh, student representatives from other universities. Um, um, yeah, that is the reason why this is that way. Und was soll der Vorteil des Ganzen sein? Das ist doch nur eine Umbenennung. Ah, I, 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 uh, what was the benefit of all of this? I suppose it's with regards to the school. Well, there, there are a bunch of motivations behind this, uh, amongst others to uh, reduce the number of, of departments and uh, thus to, to make it easier for the president's office to take decisions on TUM level. Um, and there are a bunch of new structures that were created, but uh, as I said, we, we, we didn't really have a choice uh, whether we want to do this or not. We can only make the best of it. Uh, it was the big project by the president, the new president Hoffman. So uh, I guess if you want his motivations, uh, you can always ask him. It doesn't mean that he will give you a, a satisfactory answer, but <laughs> you can try. Um, yeah, but it's what we have to deal with right now. It's something that uh, happened over the last three years or two years or uh, something around that. Have you heard of the huge on-site exams in the Tento marks this semester? Again, MMK on 8.4 by EI. Do you think such will happen in summer again, despite Corona? Uh, I, um, we had, uh, at one point, TUM introduced a regulation that at most 40 people can be in one room for exams, uh, no matter the size of the room. Um, I don't know if this exam was before this regulation took effect, but it took effect during the first exam phase of the previous semester. Uh, I heard of two or three, uh, I think maybe it was four lectures that actually did bigger exams anyway, but they violated this regulation and uh, we already informed Professor Müller, the Vice President for Study and Teaching, uh, to, uh, about this and uh, yeah, he said that that is something that's not okay and uh, so 40 is the current limit and if people adhere to the regulations, you cannot have any more than 40 people in one room uh, in the Tento marks, so um, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, okay, just once uh, more uh, note that the BBB room is uh, available, so if you want to stay here, I will continue to answer questions. Uh, on, and otherwise, there's the BBB room, the link is on the screen, where you can talk one on one to uh, others from the Fachschaft who, are, uh, who can tell you stuff about the service branch, about the different uh, services we offer, our uh, printing uh, things, our events, uh, gaming evenings. Uh, or, or also our general structure, also in regards to, to um, uh, university politics, how, how the structure is organized. So if you're rather interested in that, go there. Uh, you can also switch between the two as you like. Uh, okay, have been in Garching for a while. How has the campus changed in terms of building? What new things are planned or in progress? Um, so, there are actually a bunch of buildings not all of which I can talk about, I'm afraid. But okay, there, there's the, uh, the electrical engineering building at the back of the, um, uh, at the big parking lot at the back. There are two uh, stages uh, in which this will be uh, built. The first one is currently in progress. It will probably finish, if everything uh, goes well now, it will probably finish around 2025 or something. Uh, once this happens, the electrical engineering department or parts of it will move to Garning actually. The second one, uh, it, they both should have been 
built earlier anyway. The second one was unfortunately defunded by Mr. Söder due to his Bavaria 1 space project. So there's currently no funding for this since he wanted to do the fancy space thingy. Uh, but uh, we'll see how this will get along. Uh, so uh, that's that's a uh, that's a just a financial decision on the um, um, on Bavarian level, um, and there are all there's of course the the um, Galileo uh, that is still in work in progress and has been for years, and there is a project that we as an informatics department will benefit from that will probably happen around uh, over the next few years uh, somewhere around center the center of the campus in Garhin. Um, but unfortunately that's really early in the planning phase and I can't really give you any more information as of now but uh, once uh, those plans are finalized and publicized we will definitely inform you about this. Uh, and other than that, uh, I think there's nothing that will actually be relevant uh, as for the uh, for you as students because uh, if you start a new building project now, of course there are some projects that that, that will be started in, in the future, but uh, they, they won't be done until uh, we're not studying, unfortunately. So that that's also a reason why we really really need to uh, get our uh, student numbers under control. Uh, because we just need to handle what we can with our resources that are available right now and, uh, and anything else is something that we can talk about in, on like a 10-year basis. Okay, moving on. Uh, what about pushing bike carriage into, uh, into the semester ticket? The lack of it poses a serious hurdle for activities, 3 euros per day, e.g. if you want to go cycling at the lake. Um, I mean, there are the, those MVG bikes. Uh, I can definitely forward this to Asta, to the uh, mobility um, people, uh, to take this into the talks. But realistically, there already is a student uh, tariff. I think you can pay 12 euros for half a year, actually. And then you get 30 minutes a day for those rental bikes. Um, also, if you Within the uh, area of operation, there are often those stations, and if you put the bike into the station, you will receive 10 minutes for free, um, uh, and uh, those minutes stack actually. So if you use 10 of your daily minutes and then put it into the uh, the bike stand, you will rega regain those those 10 minutes and uh, can take them uh, into the next day. So uh, I have accumulated like seven, uh, six or seven hours of, of uh, free minutes uh, that way. Um, so that is the um, uh, thing. Are there plans uh, to introduce an LGBT support group? Um, there is the uh, diversity uh, department at the uh, ASTA, in the, um, and uh, this is definitely something that falls into uh, the, yeah, the diversity apparatus. Uh, um, area of operation. Uh, if you have very specific issues, we also have Gleichstellungsbeauftragte at Fahrschaft and PE, who you can write a, an email to if, if there's some kind of discrimination or issues to deal with, not only with LGBT but generally. Uh, but um, there, it's, uh, there, there are uh, events uh, organized by the Diversity of Art, but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, more the easiest way to to to, to uh, get about this is uh, just contact uh, contact Astas Diversity Report and uh, also if you want to organize something we we, we we are usually we are just limited by our uh, capacity of you know people to organize something now there's also the problem of Corona that we can't do everything we want to but uh, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's always great uh, to, uh, to, to have people who, who want to organize something and you, you can feel free to use our resources if you are motivated. We, we just need the manpower, whatever uh, it's, uh, yeah, that's... Ah, okay, uh, the, the, the link to the diversity uh, of art has been posted to the chat apparently. 
Uh, so you can just click there, and uh, they also have a, a, a an email. I think it's diversity at uh, And uh, yeah. Um, can Tum do something for the students to increase the vaccination rate by vaccinating the students? Uh, currently, no, because uh, the there is a for good reasons there is a um, um, state controlled uh, list how, in which way the, um, the, the the vaccinations progress. I think until June it will only be possible. Uh, to get your vaccination, if you're uh, moved, if you are for some reason on the top of this list, um, because currently the issue is not really that we can't get the the vaccine vaccines out that we already have, but the issue is that we just don't have enough vaccines, and uh, uh, that, that some deliveries uh, don't happen, and uh, some. Yeah, I don't want to get into this, what political decisions led to this, but uh, uh, as, as soon as those restrictions are lifted, maybe, but this won't happen before the beginning of June. How far is the renovation of the lecture halls in the MV? Um, well, it, actually, it, it should have been done sometime last semester, had Corona not happened. Because this was uh, this was something that um, the that, that was the thing that the tents in Garching were initially built for the first two. Uh, however, there were some delays due to uh, the difficulty of obtaining some material with Corona. Uh, I I would have to look it up how long the current schedule as how far the current schedule is along. So, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, can't really tell you when they will open up again, but right now it's irrelevant anyway due to uh, due to Corona. Yeah, we can, I, it's, it's, I think it's realistic that once we can actually move back to one-side lecture that they will be done. Uh, are the teachers really motivated, excited to teach? Uh, some lectures are not very interesting, not because of the content, but because of how it is taught. Um, uh, yeah, well, I mean, each lecturer has their own style. It is uh, rather difficult to to change a person's personality and to, you know, ch change a, a style of teaching. Um, the the thing, I, I mean, most most uh, lecturers. Or at least the uh, Übungsleitungen are usually motivated for the professors. It, it varies uh, depending. Uh, there are some. There are some that really uh, put uh, research over teaching, but most uh, are really motivated and are just sometimes uh, can, can, sometimes just cannot handle the amount of students that are uh, that they have to deal with. Uh, some just didn't uh, uh, do the transition to digital format terribly well, but there's always the uh, lecture evaluation. We uh, also, um, this is also organized by the Fahrschaft actually, uh, so once a semester you get uh, a link uh, for each lecture that you attend and where you can, uh, there you can evaluate um, the lecture based on multiple choice as well as on free text answers and uh, the uh, results of this evaluation will be um, uh, forwarded to the lecturer, uh, and uh, there, there will uh, there is also a, a, a review of the these uh, the, the general results, uh, the multiple choice ones uh, on a, uh, a department level where you can say okay this is a lecture you might uh, have, need to look at again, uh, and uh, especially if uh, it's a new lecturer or someone who hasn't done this lecture before they really take it to heart and they try to change things so. Um, usually they don't buy it. So if you if you <laughs> uh, talk talk to people, uh, if you have specific issues, feel free to come to us. If you don't want to talk to uh, them yourself, but uh, uh, tell them if you if you have constructive feedback. Just don't make it insulting and don't make it too demanding, but uh, make them uh, feel like that they are appreciated, and then they will also listen to your feedback if it's if it's uh, yeah reasonable. Uh, will students have the chance to 
to use the tool themselves to uh, to avoid mistakes before they're made. I assume that with the tool, uh, the um, plagiarism plagiarism uh, tool is meant. I think the plan is to provide this to lecturers specifically. Lecturers specifically. Uh, I don't think that there will be a student license, but I mean we can uh, we can certainly uh, take this into the talks of the of the working group or, um, uh, because it's not it's not yet decided which tool it will be and, and uh, how it will be used. So it's still in the process. Maybe we can uh, um, achieve something with regards to this. Yeah. What happens if you're still studying in the old system? Um, uh, I guess it is, I assume this question was asked in context of the school system. Um, usually your study regulations and the rules that apply to your specific study program are uh, nothing that changes if you, uh, during your study program if you don't specifically request it. So there are some situations where you can request to be moved to a newer, newer regulation but um, if something changes, it applies to the next generation of students, and uh, or if you switch to the master degree, of course you will get the newest one. Uh, but uh, within a study program, it will stay the same. So you have some sort of security uh, and can uh, continue with the modules and stuff as you as you are uh, used to it. This will that those changes are mainly relevant for the next generation of students. Ähm, Datenschutzverletzung der Übungsleitung ID. Alle Matrikelnummern wurden mit Namen an 1800 Studenten verschickt. Werden die neuen Matrikelnummern angeboten bekommen? Uh, I already heard about an incident. I don't know if it was this incident, uh, but uh, yeah, Professor Neumann talked about it in the last uh, study committee like a month ago or something. Um, they were actually considering giving out new uh, new metric number and uh, metric numbers, but uh, they weren't sure how they could actually do it and how fast they could actually do it. So it might happen. I don't know what happened since we had the last meeting of the study committee, but as I said, there will be there will actually be two meetings tomorrow, uh, and I can certainly uh, ask him there. Uh, so, uh, but but they are aware of the issue. So, as if you don't know, uh, Professor Neumann is our study dean, so uh, it's it's uh, he's on it. Um, how satisfied is the Fachschaft with the directives of the new president? Uh, uh, I mean, I can give you my personal opinion. I, I don't think there's one singular opinion of the Fachschaft, but uh, uh, regarding the school system. Like especially in the beginning stages, the consensus not in the Fachschaft but across the departments here was that it's we we, we could have done without it. But um, yeah, maybe maybe it's better not to to uh, like uh, use my personal opinion right now to to present it as the the Fachschaft's opinion because it's always. Uh, an ever-evolving thing. Uh, I think maybe admitting less people is better than having filtering subjects. We already have those. Or maybe increase number of TAs for tutorial practicums. N number of TAs? Teaching assistants. Ah, ah teaching assistants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, the, the thing is, um, this is once again a money problem, a partially a money problem. Um, you know, but when uh, chairs usually have a certain amount of scientific employees, those scientific employees need to do research as well. Usually research is the thing that gets them the uh, reputation and whatever. So teaching is always a bit secondary to them with regards to that. They can, and they, they, and it's really, really hard to just uh, increase the um, uh, number of, of people you have available to do the teaching. And there are a lot of really, really motivated people who work like 60, 70, 80 hours a week uh, to, to get their uh, teaching done and still do their research. But um, 
it's it's just not that easy. We we actually do what we do have is the uh, the so-called free and the the, um, uh, the that's money that we get from the state. Um, it's around yeah, it's it's uh, several millions a year that are used for uh, um, improving the teaching quality and uh, the financing stuff. Um, but that's the clue. Uh, we, we as students do actually have a, a, a parity, uh, like like four members in this committee who decides how uh, that decides how they uh, they are uh, used. But if we just say okay, let's just uh, use all the money to get new teaching assistants. Um, the issue is that then the university can say okay, it's already working well, uh, and then we have. Next year, we really don't have the flexibility to do anything else with those uh, to, to improve the teaching quality, and then the students' numbers rise again, and then it becomes something that that's funding the very basis that is making the study program work somehow, and that's not what's supposed to happen. It's not just the thing that should drag out the uh, the, the issue. And that being said, uh, most most uh, tutors are actually funded uh, from this, uh, or a lot of tutors are actually funded from this, and that's uh, actually already somewhat questionable, uh, considering that uh, this is also part of the reason why they can still drag it out and drag it out and drag it out uh, without really uh, caring about the issue. But uh, if we just, uh, on the other hand, if we just said, okay, no, we, we're we're not going to fund any of this anymore, it, it's it's something that's really the basis for anything we have at this university. You need to uh, fund this from the uh, the money that's actually meant for this, uh, and then they can react it fast, and then they, it just explodes, and uh, maybe it would get better next semester, but the current generation would suffer. So uh, that's a uh, huge issue, and it, it, it's it would be great if we had uh, enough teaching assistants to um, uh, actually do all of the uh, like uh, teaching in, in small groups and actually not be stuck with uh, with uh, basic organizing stuff, uh, organizational stuff um, that's uh, draining them of their energy and, and not being able to actually improve the content. Uh, but uh, it's just not easy to get new people. Uh, and more people. It's it's uh, we're, we're we're trying our best, but uh, yeah. But in principle, yes. Why is it so hard uh, to communicate a fixed exam deadline date? Uh, dates uh, two Corona semesters have passed, and dates rarely change, but keep us in doubt. Um, the the thing is. Uh, the the initial regulation changed that that reduced the amount of uh, number of weeks to two that you need to like communicate where and when and how is the exam going to take place was when corona initially started and it unfortunately hit in the middle of the exam phase so we re there was uh, the necessity to react really fast now this regulation has been uh, set and um, yeah there, there are some not, not it's not the, the the usual thing, but there are maybe some lectures that are uh, somewhat dragging it out until the last minute, even if they uh, didn't have to. But uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 just an, an issue because if you uh, if you uh, tell anyone, okay, it's definitely going to be that way six weeks in advance, and then something happens and uh, the Corona numbers rise, and you can't do on-site exams anymore, or you can't uh, even do those forty people anymore. Uh, or you have uh, some regulation change regarding to online uh, examinations, uh, and then you change it, but people already thought it's 100% fixed, uh, you have a huge issue as well. So it's uh, it's uh, just an extraordinary situation. It will definitely change again once Corona is over, but right now, um, yeah. right now we just need to work together and, and, and try, to, uh, all parties need to try to do their best to, to keep the system running, but it's yeah, uh, it's usually not a uh, deliberate uh, decision to make things worse. Okay, um, so we will keep doing the Q and A for a bit. We will uh, 
close it soon though if there are any questions remaining that we haven't answered and we have a, a set time frame unfortunately so if there are any questions that we haven't answered that uh, need uh, that, that are um, uh, that we will we will definitely look through them uh, afterwards and uh, um, if we uh, find anything that's that's not been communicated we will do so on other channels or newsletter email whatever also note that uh, the BBB room is still open if you want to talk uh, um, to uh, the other uh, guys uh, from the service branch uh, in one-on-one -on -one talks what uh, what you can do there uh, head over there you can feel free to switch uh, back here and uh, over there also we will probably leave this up on YouTube so uh, you can rewatch this you, you can't uh, really rewatch the uh, other thing uh, because it's a one-on-one -on -one video conference uh, or like a smaller smaller-ish group um, uh, so we're probably going to do 15 more minutes and then we'll wrap this up and uh, see how far we get. Um, okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, regarding huge on-site exams in Tentomax last semester, MMK circumvented the maximum 40 regulation up to 31 by postponing the exam to April, please prevent it in summer. Yeah, um, actually that was, um, that's actually a thing, uh, a, 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 a that the president, the vice president for study teaching and uh, the president's office really recommended that um, they were hoping that um, the numbers would go down and they could actually uh, uh, still do it as planned in April. So these total lectures, either you do it online now or you move it to a later date. Unfortunately, the corona numbers didn't uh, develop as we all wanted to. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, did it still happen? Because if it still happened, that was definitely against the regulations. This 40 limit was not lifted. It is still in effect and if they want to do the exam in, or did the exam in April, they would have had to do it uh, in, uh, online if it was more than 40 people or in more uh, spread across more rooms, but this gets really difficult uh, if you have really huge exams. Um, but yeah, so that being said, we will of course do to, to everything to ensure the maximum planning security and we will always try to improve communication because we know that uh, the central administration uh, sometimes is not too uh, uh, good at communicating things uh, as quickly as we would like to uh, but um, yeah we, we, we just it's just really hard to give any guarantees uh, considering the uh, situation of the pandemic right now okay next one uh, I am already vaccinated can I go visit the library was the question that I saw there. Uh, generally it is possible, to, I, I think it, it is still possible, it was possible last month uh, if you schedule a, uh, a certain, uh, if you schedule a um, time slot, uh, but uh, if you want to know what the current regulation is, this changes uh, every few weeks depending on the current uh, laws which have changed not too long ago. Uh, just visit the library website under uv.tum.de. Uh, there you will definitely find the uh, the current information. As far as I know, it doesn't depend on being vaccinated right now because uh, there there is no regulation yet that takes this into account. But uh, it it might be possible to uh, uh, go to the library to get some book. Also, you can't use it as a learning room right now, but you can that there's some pickup system for books if you need them. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, whatever happens, and there's a YouTube link. I Unfortunately, I'm sitting here and can't click on it right now, so uh, feel free to do so. Uh, I will, in the meantime, move on. Will the number of electives... No, other question. How about the chairs? Uh, will they remain in the new school structure? Uh, the chairs, yes, the chairs will remain. They uh, will be assigned to different departments though. So, uh, as I said, there are currently three um, uh, three departments in the old system, Fakultäten, and there will be four sub-departments of uh, uh, the school of CIT. So, uh, each chair will be uniquely assigned to one of those departments, computer engineering, computer science, electrical engineering, or 
mathematics, you will find mo most informatics chairs in computer engineering or computer science. Uh, the study programs, on the other hand, will not be uniquely assigned to one sub-department, but to one professional profile, and uh, the chairs will uh, do the uh, lectures um, across, like, like it's a matrix structure in a way. They, they, they also made those fancy pictures with matrix structure uh, and so on uh, to visualize it. So it's, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, parallel constructs. Uh, but yes, the chairs will still exist. Will the number of electives for current Master of Science informatics students increase after the change to the school system instead of the current departments? Um, not immediately. There is a fair chance that uh, some shift of modules will happen, but, uh, and, um, but it, there's no immediate, uh, it's not a, an immediate result of the change, but it's more of an indirect result. So any new modules that are offered uh, or any modules from another faculty that could be moved in there are uh, the, it will be approved separately by the so-called Bildungsausschuss, the examination board, uh, and um, this, this you will probably notice it over the next few years, but it won't change uh, right away, and as, in, especially it won't change uh, right away for existing students. So that's you probably most probably something that will um, affect the next generation of students if you're already studying your master. Uh, do master students also have to pay increased fee international students when the very law gets passed? Uh, I already talked about this earlier. So our current hope is that they actually got rid of this passage altogether. Uh, we don't know it for sure. We don't have the, uh, the uh, draft bill. Uh, it's not been released yet, unfortunately. Uh, so um, we'll see if it's in the final version. We'll keep you updated, but uh, our hopes are much higher than last time that it will actually be removed from the law altogether. So, yeah. Um, if I begin my master in the next winter term, will it then already be set within the school of CIT? Uh, yes, yes. The, I mean, the, um, uh, it, it won't necessarily, if you start next semester, change the, um, uh, the, your, your uh, study plan or anything, you will probably still have the same plan or instead same uh, most of the same regulations uh, that are currently in effect, but uh, at least formally you are part of the CIT school and uh, you will have CIT uh, computation information technology on your, your final uh, um, diploma uh, and, and stuff. So, uh, um, but yeah, it, it will mainly be a, a for, for those starting next semester, it will probably mainly be a, a rebranding of sorts and uh, other changes will take effect uh, after that. Um, improving the quality of the provided study material to make self-study easier would also help curbing the increased student numbers. Some material is abysmal. Um, yeah, well, unfortunately, Fortunately, it's, uh, that, that's always up to the, the individual uh, lecturers uh, to create the material. That's a lot of work, so uh, unfortunately it's, it, also, it also works the other way around. If you have more students, you have more organizational stuff to do, uh, and uh, thus you don't have as much time to uh, create materials for the lecturers. Uh, and uh, so they may suffer. Um, I think it's it, it, it's a thing we should work towards, uh, but it's not a, not a, the only solution. So it, it should not uh, be okay. Um, here you have a bunch of good material. Uh, do the work yourself. And uh, now that we have this material, you, uh, you we can increase our student numbers further. Uh, that's that's not going to work out. Sir, please try to conduct exams online because Germany banned India and I think many students can't reach Germany over time. I like to quote him, sir. <laughs> Interesting. Um, uh, um, well, uh, as I said, the, for this semester, uh, all the lectures will definitely be online uh, and for the exams, you can also expect online exams for the most part. Um, especially, we all know that it is difficult for international students uh, to cross borders right now and that is one of the reasons why uh, even if it becomes possible for this semester it will still stay online as well. Um, 
I can't make any promises for next semester, unfortunately. But uh, the, you, it, we will be sure to take this into account. Uh, but with a bit of luck, the band won't be there anymore when next semester starts. So uh, yeah, uh, we're all hoping for it to normalize uh, for the winter semester. And maybe you can come again. Uh, will there be no more? Uh, Will there be more cooperation between Toom and other big companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook? I think it's pretty helpful for students to have a better future. Um, well, I'm personally, I'm always a bit um, uh, taken aback when you get too much involvement of uh, those big companies in science, uh, just because it it. Uh, really questions the independence of science in uh, some ways and also the, 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 if you're really dependent on the on the money of, of on the money of those big companies it's it also makes a bunch of things more difficult uh, um, regarding the, the uh, freedom of science but there will there are already corporations so uh, uh, Tum has a bunch of partners Facebook has this new ethics institute here as a PR thingy uh, there will also be a, a board of trustees sort construction on the school level, which I see with mixed feelings. Um, so if you don't know, there's the uh, there's the senate on Tum level, and there's a board of trustees, with, which is basically the senate plus an, a bunch of uh, people from companies like a BMW CEO, whatever. Uh, so and uh, this board makes very basic decisions uh, how this university works um, uh, so yeah it's, it's always a, a, a double-edged sword if you if you uh, include those companies too much it's great if you have programs uh, for people to get into those companies but um, yeah it, it's uh, if you give, give these companies too much influence in the uh, organization of the university itself it's it's uh, a bit difficult uh, a difficult discussion to have Professors are doing a great job. I would request them to make questions even harder and challenging. It's always fun to give a difficult exam. I'd rather not rush. What? Interesting. Yeah, if, if you like it, I mean, everyone's got their kink. Feel free to. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I, the exam difficulty is something that lecturers decide themselves anyway, so uh, usually if something doesn't work out, we can intervene afterwards, but it's... Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I accept that. It's... Uh, this week I heard the Übungsleiter for one of my lecturers say that they expect 30 hours of work per week for 8 ACTS. Is this is that allowed? How is to monitoring the quality? Um, I mean... Uh, it's a bit difficult to say what is allowed because it's it's really hard to monitor how much work you put into this. Actually, um, usually the lecturers will will um, construct the lecture in a way so that it is it is realistic for a, a certain percentage of the of the uh, people to pass uh, passively, but. I mean, in the end, at university, it's always up to you how much work you put into this. There are some lectures that are really hard, I know that, but um, um, it, it's really hard to create some formal regulation to restrict lectures on how hard they make the lecture or how much work they expect of you. But a usually rule of a rule of thumb is that a one ECTS equals a total of thirty hours of work. Uh, so 30 hours per week if they expect this uh, it's definitely a lecture that is that, that is uh, not easy not uh, it's more workload than there should be for one ECTS I mean if you have a specific issue with one lecture we can always talk to the lecturer uh, but um, don't uh, expect a general regulation to restrict uh, on how hard them on how hard they uh, um, hard, hard to make the lectures. So uh, I suppose I will take the 
three questions that are still on the screen and then we need to wrap it up because it's 12 o'clock now and we're out of time and um, a lot of people need to go back to their lectures and uh, lecturers get mad if we steal their time. Uh, but as I said, we can get back to you and uh, still sum it up and um, yeah. Um, has there been an assessment of online proctoring with regards to G by FEV? Um, an assessment of online proctoring? I'm not entirely sure what you, what you mean by that. Is it legal online proctoring? I mean, it's the 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 Fernprüfungserprobungsverordnung is what's currently in effect. I don't think there has been any legal challenge that has been successful, but um, it's usually rather the case that some uh, uh, that the university or, or lecturers have a very broad understanding of what this law means uh, or and how to interpret the this. Uh, okay, you have a right to an onsite exam if you have this. In, that proctoring method, um, but the law itself has not been successfully challenged, I think. Yeah. Uh, will the student assembly still exist in CIT? Uh, yes, there will be a student assembly. Uh, the they look different. We don't know yet how. We, yeah, okay, we, we, are, uh, we are still uh, working out the details, uh, but. Um, uh, there is a, a fair chance that we will have a uh, like a 40. Uh, so uh, there will be subgroups of the elected representatives for the uh, single professional profiles. There will be an option to do one big assembly. There will be an option to do the, the separate assemblies. We're still working on the fine details with that. But yes, there will definitely be a, a student assembly. It's uh, just still in the works how exactly we will organize it. Um, yeah. Uh, we have written a few paragraphs of our uh, of our GO already, but uh, I think it's better if we get into the details once it's finalized next time, um, because uh, yeah, just expect one student assembly in some some form or shape or whatever. This will definitely not be abandoned. Uh, what can we do when uh, retake online exams are on a completely different level of difficulty than the normal exams uh, exam? Um, I'm afraid not too much. Uh, beyond talking to the lecturer, uh, it's it's only feasible to escalate this to the next level, such as the study dean, if it's a really extreme case. Um, but we really can't uh, force a lecturer to do anything which uh, how they present and how they uh, how they uh, examine um, their, their contents uh, because it's uh, it's also once again part of this freedom of science and teaching and uh, there's a good reason good reason this exists so that you can't uh, politically restrict what is supposed to be Taught, but it also has a uh, uh, few effects, so that is, it's getting difficult to, to regulate this, you know. Uh, so if you have specific issues, uh, come to us, we can talk to lecturers, it usually helps, um, but we will have to do this on a case-to-case -case basis, so uh, we can't just do a general uh, regulation that restricts the difficulty uh, of exams, because it's always a bit subjective as well, so that's, uh, that's another thing. Okay, uh, that being said, we, uh, the, the rest of the questions, we will uh, review those and um, um, yeah, we'll get back to you if there's anything left unanswered. Um, right, uh, if, if you have anything uh, specific to ask us, we are always reachable under fsinfo at fs.tum.te. Don't be afraid to ask us, uh, we, we, we don't buy it, we're students as well, we just uh, do this uh, uh, voluntary student representation work on the site and uh, we're trying our best to help and I mean if we can't help that's unfortunate sometimes this happens but uh, just just ask. Um, right, uh, I, I hope this was informative, I hope you got your questions answered, uh, we'll definitely take the uh, poll results uh, with us.
uh, work with those um, and yeah, see you, see you soon, hopefully. Bye.
Bye-bye.